Hey guys, this is Adriel and today we're going to do a walkthrough of the Redmi 5 or a lot of Redmi phones camera software. So in case you don't know, Xiaomi actually customizes the camera software depending on which phone you have. Some features get nerfed, some features get added, some interface tweaks happen. So for example, this is the Redmi 5 Plus over here is the Mi Mix 2. The software is quite different in terms of where the placement of all the buttons are, uh, where the menu button is, etc. The reason why I'm doing this is so that I can have a reference and you can just point out, hey, if you want to learn more about the camera software, just check it out. Because the camera software here is not just relevant to the Redmi 5 Plus, but also to other phones that I've listed down in the description. So let's get started with the camera software. So first of all, let's talk about the tall screen. So the phone doesn't really take advantage of the tall screen. It doesn't stretch out the image all the way. It may be a good thing depending on what you're talking about. As what you see here is what you're gonna get. In the viewfinder, you have the flash on the top left, uh, of which you can toggle between off, auto, and on, and then the HDR button on the top right, which is just a simple tap to turn on, tap to turn off. You have your, your gallery down the bottom left, shutter button, and video button. Uh, this only changes the modes, it doesn't start recording the video. You can also activate the shutter key by using the fingerprint sensor on the back to take photos. Can I use it for selfies? You have the filter options here of which you have Lomo, Colourpop, Rustic, Icy, Vivid, Analog, Matte, Mono, Black and White, and Sketch. Oh, and I forgot to mention, in terms of the filters, there's also other distortion functions, I guess. You have the spread function, you have the squeeze function, and you can't really adjust a lot of them. You have the stretch, fish eye, mosaic, mirror, and tunnel. The only exception to what you can adjust is the mosaic, which allows you to drag a box across your frame and then adjust where you want to censor. So for example, I can censor that and take a photo. You have the options, which brings up the menu. Now this options varies on depending on which phone you have sometimes. And you have the flip button to flip back to the back camera or the front camera, right? So in terms of taking photos or tapping on the, sh on the viewfinder, once you tap on the viewfinder, it will focus and set exposure on spot metering based on that location. You can adjust an exposure comp by moving the slider on the right. It's very sensitive, might I add. Personally, I wish you have an exposure slider on the bottom here, like some of the Samsungs, because it's kind of hard to fit around with that personally. And unfortunately, there's no way to do an autofocus and auto exposure lock separately. If you tap and hold, it will just snap the photo right away. If you go under options here, you have the settings up here, panorama road, which is basically panorama, a timer mode, which allows you to set a delay from three seconds, five seconds to 10 seconds, no two shot option. The audio option, which will basically trigger when I'm speaking loud enough, is based on volume. The manual mode, which unfortunately on Redmi's have been nerfed quite a fair bit to only white balance and ISO adjustments. You don't have any exposure or focus adjustments, unfortunately. The ISO range on the Redmi 5 Plus goes from 100 to 3200. Do keep in mind that there's still a minimal shutter speed, so if, if you notice on ISO 100, it will still take a photo of at least a shutter speed of, in this case, a uh, 17th of a second. You have the straighter mode, which basically uses a solar meter to crop the photo and to make the photo straight no matter what angle you shoot at. You have the beautify function, which is basically smooths out your skin and everything. On the back facing camera, you only have low, medium, and high. You don't have manual adjustment options. You have the HHT mode, which basically takes, if I'm correct, five shots in a row, stitch them together to reduce noise. Now on some phones such as the Redmi 5 Plus, it will be enabled automatically in auto mode when it's low enough light. So you don't actually always need to go enable it. I'll show you how to disable it and more on that. But one thing to know about the HHT option is that you do need a steady hand because you'll be stitching all those photos together. So steady hand with HHT is a must. You also have the C mode, which basically is your typical camera scene modes, and you adjust exposure and settings accordingly to take advantage of it. In terms of what scenes we get, we have the portrait mode, landscape, sports, night, night portrait, beach, snow, sunset, fireworks, backlight, and flowers. We then have the tilt shift mode, which is basically blurs out certain parts of the photo, and in this case, you can do a circle. You can adjust it in terms of the where it's done, but you can't really adjust the size of it to any of two modes, which is circle and parallel. Now moving on, let's go into settings. So you have options to save location information, which basically saves the GPS tag on the photos. Camera sounds, which I think that's pretty obvious. Pocket mode, which basically prevents you doing touch gestures and activating it in when you are pocket. You can add a timestamp to photos, which looks like this. You can add an edge stamp on photos. You can show grid lines, which, which as the name suggests, adds grid lines to the screen, which helps you make rule of third compositions if you prefer. You can scan QR codes, which is a very nice feature. 
which basically once the camera detects a QR code, you can just click view QR code details and see what it holds. Hmm. Subscribe. You can enhance low light photos automatically. Now this is the function I was talking about from HHT. If you have this enabled in low enough light conditions, it will enable HHT automatically and you will be able to notice this because when HHT is enabled, there will be like a spinning around the gallery uh, icon as the photo is taking a while to process. The same goes for HDR. HDR also has this delay. Both HHT and HDR tend to have a delay of about 0.5 to like 2 seconds to process. You have the option to change what pressing and holding the shutter button will do, either do a burst shot or focus. You can change the camera frame, you can change the picture quality. On, and on the Redmi 5 Plus, the picture quality uh, has file sizes of this, so well, I just like keeping it up high. You have face detection, which will automatically adjust exposure and focus uh, based on the faces. The age and gender function, which is basically in the beautify function, which I'll show you later. You can make it show your age and gender when beautify is on. I'll show you more about that in a sec. You can set what your volume button function as, so shutter, zoom, volume, anti-banding, auto exposure setting, which is by default on center weight. Frame average is probably a better option, honestly. Let's switch it to that. You can change your contrast, saturation, and sharpness of your pros of your photos. And you have an option from going to lowest, lower, low, normal, high, higher, highest, which is actually a pretty large range. So for personally, I would like to keep my sharpness as lower because the Redmi 5 Plus loves to over sharpen all the pictures. So for the front-facing camera, you do have a lot less modes. So for example, here I have a timer option and audio option only. I don't have the panorama or whatever other options there is. Now on the Redmi 5 Plus, we do have a front-facing flash, so we have option to enable it from here. In here is either off, auto or on. On will basically keep the light on. It's not like a sudden flash that happens. Which I guess is good because it lets you know how the photo will look before you take it. There is no screen flash like you have on the iPhones or like some Samsung and I think Google also does it with the camera app where you can suddenly brighten up the screen to like light up your face and stuff. None of that is here on the Redmi 5 Plus. You also have the same filters and the effects and you have the beautify options on the top right. So you have either smart, which you can either go as low, medium, and high, similar to how you do it on the back facing camera in beautify mode, or you can go into pro mode, which you can choose how much you want to slim your face or smoothen out your skin. Remember when I was talking about the age function just now? This is what it does. So if you can see up there, it says how old the it thinks I am, which is like 21 and male, 24 male, and that's basically what it is. And if you take a photo with this timestamp on, you basically get a photo with the, what the camera is guessing your ages. Now, I personally recommend you turn this off because, because unfortunately it only saves this photo. There is no other photo that it saves without this thing. It's rather easy to turn off thankfully and that's what I recommend you do. Now let's shift over to video mode. Now once you hit the video mode button, it will go into video mode. It does not start recording automatically. On the back camera, you can enable the flash and it will just be like a flashlight like that. It's a simple tap to turn on, tap to turn off, which you can't on and off when you're recording video, by the way. You can only enable it before you start recording video. And once you start recording video, you can actually pause a recording and start recording again. In video options, you are limited to time-lapse and slow motion. Time-lapse basically will take a bunch of photos uh, in a certain interval. You can change this interval in the settings. I'll get to that in a sec. And then slow motion, which basically uh, will capture slow motion video depending on what phone you have and what the phone is capable of doing. Now, if we move into video options a bit, we have image capture while recording, which, which basically allows you to snap pictures while taking video. As far as I know, these are snapshots of the video and not high quality photos of it, so do take note of that. And you can set the video quality, so the Redmi 5 Plus supports up to 4K, so 4K is there. And you also have the option to set the focus mode, which is either continuous autofocus or tap to focus. So with tap to focus, you can tap at a certain area and you just tap to focus and expose based on what you selected. With continuous autofocus, you can only tap the screen for it to just adjust the whole focus based on what it thinks is right. And we have the time mass interval and the volume button functions and that's about it. Now one annoying thing about the software of the video mode is that your options button is gone when you're recording video in the front facing camera. So in terms of your resolution, you're kind of stuck with whatever it gives you. Now on the Redmi 5 Plus, we do have the flash option because it has a front facing flash. And then again, it works like how it does in photo, which is like a flashlight. Unfortunately, you cannot enable it or disable it during video recording. You can tell it's gone. The option is gone, which is annoying. 
Now if your phone is unlocked and you go into the gallery, you get full access to whatever is on your phone. However, if you access it from the lock screen, you will see that there's a blank area here as it does in order to hide your photos. Of course, this is assuming you have a passcode lock of some sort. And if you take a photo, you will not be able to access the rest of your library. If you try to swipe right to see more of your photos, you won't be able to see more. The only way that you can get access back to and see more of your photos is for you to literally exit the app, unlock the phone, and then open the camera app to see your other photos. On most Mi phones, you can enable a quick launch of the camera from the lock screen by going under settings, lock screen and password and going to launch camera, enabling that which basically allows you to on the camera with just a double tap from the lock screen or the when the phone's off but unfortunately you cannot do it from a number wake now there's an option on some Redmi phones to enable double press the power button to enter the camera and for this phone it's under additional settings, buttons and gesture shortcuts and open launch camera by double pressing the power button as you can see here now the annoying thing about this is that it does lock your screen so your gallery will be empty. It's not like the other Android phones running stock Android where you can still access your gallery from it, which is annoying. So that is about the roundup of the camera software on the Redmi series. Now this Redmi camera software applies to a lot of Redmi phones that I'll put in the description of which phone it applies to. So if you're interested in the camera software, hey, here's a quick, quick look. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it informative. If you want the full review of the Redmi 5 Plus, it's coming up on the main channel that I have, which is the Access Project, which covers everything tech and not just Xiaomi. So subscribe there if you're interested. Let's put it right there, shall we? Now, this is not a review of the Redmi 5 Plus camera quality. I will do a separate video on that because there's a lot of things to discuss. So if you look forward to that and a lot of things Xiaomi, subscribe to Mi Access. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.